Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. Next up, documentary film. We love film here at Park City Television. Of course, we're very fortunate to do a ton of interviews during the Sundance Film Festival, but it isn't the only time of year when we take the topic of documentary film seriously. I'm excited to have filmmaker Karen Gornick here this morning. She has made a film called Angst, and I am excited to hear all about it. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm wonderful, and it's a beautiful morning here in Park City. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, thank you for coming. And tell us about this film, and give us some background on, on the filmmaker's inspiration for what is always a great undertaking to produce a film. Yes, well, so Angst is a 56-minute documentary that was born out of a true uh, need to find hope and uh, healing. And so um, my co-producer and I, Sheila Andreen, with the IndieFlix um, Foundation up in Seattle, we had just finished another film, and she reached out to me um, after a co-worker had passed away. She had died by suicide mm. and said, you know, we really need to do a film about anxiety and understanding anxiety and depression and when she called me I was literally in the middle of a crisis with my own son my own teenage son who's 17 wow. and was dealing with uh, an anxiety disorder and at the time I didn't know what was happening I just felt as a desperate parent trying to get help from my child before he didn't want to be on this planet anymore yes and so the two of us really set out on this journey last year to understand what is anxiety, why are so many of us suffering from it, why is it on the rise, and what can we do about it? And um, you know, the really incredible thing is that we found out when we finally got help was to find out there is so much hope and there's definitely treatment uh, without a doubt. And uh, I actually came here to Utah to get help for my son. And when I learned about his anxiety and then my anxiety as a parent, ah. um, which I didn't know about until I'd learned about his, um, then we really, Sheila and I really uh, put together a film that was going to explain how anxiety happens in our bodies. As humans, we all experience it. And then uh, what are some tips to help us feel better? And uh, that there's, most importantly, that there's hope and breaking the stigma of talking about it. Indeed, and, and, and that last bit is so much of, we just finished a, a conversation in which we used the terms awareness and education and absolutely center stage in this consideration that understanding that that these are natural brain processes that happen and to learn not to suffer them but of course it's very easy to say to learn not to suffer them than it is to actually go through that process yes I mean if you're human you experience anxiety at some point so this is this is something that we're all dealing with it's just that we um, you know it can really there's a continuum you know there's the everyday stress is when you're you know, coming in to do this or sure. the feeling that you might have before you do a test or walk into a really important meeting at school at school or at work and it's um, you know, understanding what is happening in our bodies when you get to that tipping point where it becomes Im impeding um, in your life and you can't do the things that you typically love to do. And that is where, um, you know, we're really trying to help people understand what's happening in the body physically, how to calm ourselves, and that, you know, if you're looking at a continuum, that there is help along the way and there are things you can do. If you just have everyday anxiety, there are things you can do like breathing, um, you know, uh, concentrating on the clock ticking in the room to calm your mind and your body and your heartbeat to you know all the way over here where you're having an anxiety disorder and you're actually having panic attacks as well and it's it's inhibiting your daily life it's so important for people to know that there is help anywhere along that line we always enjoy to hear the journey of discovery that the documentarian makes along the way are there notable things of course you learned a great deal but are there are are there notable takeaways from the process as a filmmaker that that surprised you or have been kind of a, a, a dramatic takeaway for your everyday life absolutely I, I would say that the the single most important thing that I learned and that I uh, tell parents when I'm on panels is that modeling our own vulnerability is the first place to start um, for others around us 
and as parents for our kids. Because if if they're seen as always having it together, yes. um, then they're not going to feel like it's okay to sometimes struggle. So if we're coming home and saying, you know, I had a really hard day at that meeting, and a, you know, I was really uncomfortable, I didn't know how to get into the meeting or how to start it, and talked about how you know we, we did our deep breathing and or how we worked through that or a conflict with a friend, then it really helps our kids see that Wow, you know, it's okay to not be okay sometimes, and that there is there can be resolution and how to work through it. So modeling vulnerability is probably the first thing that I I think is the, is the biggest takeaway. And um, you know, the other thing that really surprised me was just how many people are suffering from severe anxiety and anxiety disorders. I mean, it's the number one mental health issue in the United States today, and yet only a third of those that have anxiety disorders are getting help for it when there is it's treatable and there's there's no need to suffer and also you know the median onset of um, an anxiety disorder is age seven so the earlier we can learn wow. about this and get help and support preventatively for teens to start talking about it and normalizing um, talking about mental health the less will lessen the stigma and will increase the amount of people being able to get help and I think it's fair to say, and I'll use a little bit of a hackneyed phrase, but people our age still come from a time in, in the life of, of America and the life of the world when doing exactly the opposite of what you're talking about. Disguising vulnerability, not being open in talking in one's own world, let alone with one's children about these issues, that it is a universal thing that can help people not feel so alone, but that's change that, that we must affect in our own lives first. Absolutely. I mean, I think uh, Jerry Bubrick, who's with the Child Mind Institute and one of the experts in our film, says something I think that's really poignant, which is that uh, for some reason, disorders above the neck are things that we don't take as seriously as disorders below the neck. Interesting. When, yeah. when really, they are just as important. I mean, we're walking around every day and our happiness and, and how we're feeling affects our bodies and our heartbeat and our, you know, whether we're having stomach aches or not. And uh, you know, it's really the experts that I talk to really shared that so many problems and health issues that people have and psychological issues that people have later in life have so much to do with undiagnosed anxiety. So the more we can talk about it and the more we can normalize it for our kids and for ourselves, the more likely we are to get help. And, and such an important thing for, for all of our mental health, for sure. Talk about your takeaway in terms of the journey through the film, the journey of discovery and, and understanding where we are now. What is your prognosis for the future for us as a people, as a society, but also for uh, the discipline of treating mental health conditions and disorders. Are you hopeful? I, I am so hopeful, and I'm actually really excited that you asked this question. Um, I'm, uh, and I actually feel really emotional about it. I just was at a, at a really um, powerful screening last night and the night before, one in Park City, one in Harriman, where there have been seven suicides um, just in the last year in that community. And there's a lot, there are a lot of communities in crisis. And um, when we first put out the film about five months ago, um, we were surprised just by how many communities are in crisis. But we were also surprised but ju by just how much people are ready to talk about this. I mean, teens are, are, are coming to the, to the screenings and standing up and asking questions and begging for help and wanting to know what their school is going to do about it. And school officials are actually taking it seriously and saying, you know what, you're right. We really need to make a change here to support you better and coming together with either wellness centers or, um, you know, there, I, I see a movement. I, I even see it in, in the workplace. I mean, the film is being shown now in corporations. We were just shown in Microsoft for Mental Health Awareness Month in May Congratulations. to all their employees. Um, so corporations are now using this as an employee benefit um, and uh, for their families to see, for their employees' families to see. Um, we are also seeing this as a worldwide issue. We're now being seen in, I think, over 14 countries. We're translated into six languages. Wow. Um, That's so, exciting. Yeah, it's, it's just really resonating and um, I think there's such a, a need. I think people are ready to talk about it. And, and it always, every day it surprises me to see um, which, which different sets of uh, groups are, are interested. I mean, we've heard from the national curling, curling team in Canada. You know, we've heard from football teams and coaches who want to talk 
and, and, and bring the importance of mental health and those issues to their team members because it really affects how they play. Absolutely. And then we really hear a lot about from a lot of um, uh, people on the front lines, like ER doctors, who are also understanding how important it is, to, after they see this film, to be, have more empathy for people that come in with a panic attack and that you know they really are having physical symptoms yes. and how to help those. There may not be a, a rash or a, a cut or bleeding, and yet there's still a, a very real health crisis happening in that moment. Well, absolutely. Should we take a look at the trailer? Yes, that's great. It's Karen's film, Angst. Congratulations. Thank you. The brain scan images mm -hmm. at the end made me think about the excitement of the tools that we have yes. today and the fact that, that we are all aware that, that there aren't necessarily pharmaceutical solutions, but that, that we have solutions in our own power and the, the mixture of intellect and emotion that goes into this process really heavy and, and, and really exciting. Oh yeah, I mean, um, Michael Phelps makes an appearance in the film and uh, we did a really great interview with him where he opened up and shared a lot about um, just how much he learned how we, we have within us what we need in order to um, really help keep this anxiety at bay. And it's when you, but the key is opening up and talking about it so you can get the support that you need. But there are so many um, new things that we've learned now about how we can calm our bodies and our brain. And neuroplasticity is real. You know, we can yes, really train yes. our brain towards the positive. And there are so many things that you can do. I mean, um, and one simple example is, you know, Michael Phelps talked about when he first got therapy that he had the strategy of, he learned the strategy of every time you walked through a doorway to say a positive affirmation. And, you know, he used to be flooded with negative thoughts thoughts about himself. He really didn't like who he was. But you know, you think about how many doorways you go through throughout the day between your, your bathroom, your bedroom, your uh, office, and by the end of the day, you've probably got a good 20, 25 positive affirmations there. Um, but yeah, we're learning so much about hang, how anxiety, um, when we're feeling anxiety, how we're in our amygdala, which is in the, you know, um, the back of our brains. And that when you're in that fight or flight, it is so hard to in any way think rationally. And you have to really distract yourself to get yourself out of it so that you can get to your prefrontal cortex, which is where you're going to have that rational thinking. And Jenny Howe in the film, our lead anxiety uh, specialist, really explains the science behind that in our film so that people can understand better about you know, why it is we need to take a break um, and reboot and come back to not avoid because avoiding is only going to feed the anxiety. Yes. You know? Yes, absolutely. And and what a great choice and, and what a great access to take one of the greatest athletes in the history of our recording of contests and someone that we think of as an unassailable talent, which he was yeah. for a very long time. Yeah. And yet we've learned over the years about his struggles and to see your your young teen subject almost frame to frame <laughs> with one of the greatest, most decorated athletes in the world and their commonalities, not their differences, is fascinating. It's, it's incredible um, bringing those two together, you know, seeing Michael Phelps, who's so tall and strong, and then mm -hmm. seeing, uh, you know, at the time, 10-year-old Charlie, and who was struggling, yet the two of them were struggling with the exact same things. Um, both some, you know, being feeling so debilitated by their anxiety that they, at one point, didn't want to live. And to have Michael, be so generous as he was to come in and really open up and share to Charlie just his own experience and how he learned it's okay to not be okay. I mean, that alone has set Charlie off in a, in, in a direction as well of feeling that he's not alone and how important it is for us to connect, find that person to connect because there's, there's somebody out there that cares. No matter how hard it is to look, there is somebody out there that cares. You're on a mission. I'm on a mission. I am. I really am. You know, this is very personal to me, and yeah. I live with it every day with, with my, I have a 17-year-old son and a 14-year-old girl, and um, 
and you know I deal with anxiety myself and so I just I'm really on a mission you know I, I want to help people heal and realize how much hope there is for this very treatable condition um, and uh, before we have any more teen suicides it's absolutely we need to get, we need to get the word out there and if people go to angstmovie.com it's really easy to find a screening um, you can just put in your zip code and find out where the next one is um, or you can easily book one by going to angstmovie.com as well we also have a, a whole host of resources that I, as a parent, had wished we'd, I could have found. Yes. Um, so if you go to angstmovie.com slash resources, you'll find a host of everything from mindfulness apps to videos um, and books for all, you know, whether you're a teacher or a parent or, or a teen struggling, there, there's help there. Thank you so much for making this film. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to talk to you about it today and let more people know about it. Absolutely. Well, we've, we've loved having you here, and we hope that you'll visit Park City again soon. And best wishes for fantastical success with this film. I have a feeling that the resonance that you're already feeling with people is only going to amplify. Thank you. I hope so. Thank Karen you. Karen Gornick, so nice to meet you. Thank you. Best wishes for safe travels and more success. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Angst Movie. Make sure to find out more about it. This is a universal theme, truly. Our thanks to Karen for being here. Quick break. Much more show after this.